Despite being usurped by Henry, don't think me a forlorn plasticide lover, far from it. I was very much in demand and had some notable ladies vying to manacle me. I had seriously considered the suit of Mary Howard, Duchess of Richmond, a match that had much merit. She was well connected being Henry Fitzroy's widow. Yet clearly, I wasn't high enough in the court hierarchy for her brother Henry. He refused to support the match. It would later emerge he had earmarked her for the king. And she is daughter-in-law. What a cad! Prading the young widow in front of him, only to be upstaged by my Lady Latimer. Foiled, he then tried to propose Mary as concubine, in the hope of her stepping into Catherine's vast shoe collection. I suppose the king had acquired a track record, so ambitious Henry Howard gambled on a vacancy for wife number seven. <laughs> Thankfully without success. No matter the morals of a sewer rat. So, back to overseas postings and time for me to showcase my talent. I was to become quite the hero. In the four years away from English shores, I served as Marshal of the English Army fighting the French, at one point in total command of our forces, then becoming Master General of the Ordnance in 1544 and Lord Warden of the Cinque Ports. Finally, I had some importance. I had begun to emerge from the long shadow cast by my perfect elder brother. The timing once again was everything, though happily working in my favour on this occasion. No sooner was I back in England and at the centre of court when, bingo, Henry died. The old infirm, angry and sad shadow of a man would not be missed, at least not be by me nor my betrothed Catherine. She had kept her candle lit for me, but there was etiquette to be observed. Of greater importance was the consolidating of my position. The young King Edward, my nephew, was just nine years old, and thus a Regency Council would be required. New titles were bestowed on his kin, mainly on my brother Edward, who became Duke of Somerset. I was made Baron of Sudley. I was also appointed Lord High Admiral, which gave me sweeping powers over the Navy. Big Brother gave himself sweeping powers too, over the realm, making himself Lord Protector, Head of the Council, thus ruler of England in all but name. He just couldn't resist lording it over me yesterday. I needed a way to prevent myself slipping back into his shadow. Was I not too uncle to the king? There was another way. I gambled on Edward making amends for his father's indecent treatment of his two stepsisters, Mary and Elizabeth. I figured he would recognise and restore them to the line of succession. As neither were wed, nor had matches in the pipeline, I swooped in, revealing my hand to both, giving the elder sister first choice, of course. A double rejection from the Tudor princesses was a bit of a blow. Elizabeth, a very bright and mature girl of 13, wrote me the most eloquent letter, explaining how I should not take it personally and that she had taken herself off the marriage market for two years to fully mourn her beloved father. Time for plan B. Thrice widow Catherine would be my ticket. Left an even wealthier widow than before, but now with the added bonus of being the Dowager Queen, <laughs> ding dong. Henry had decreed that she be afforded all the status and respect befitting a queen, as if he was still alive. Not forgetting she was also stepmother to my nephew, the young king. In this game of top trumps, Edward would not beat me. So forget etiquette, no time. Within six months of Henry being history, Catherine and I wed in secret. As was to be expected, our union caused a bit of a scandal. In fact, such was the fallout, it almost eclipsed the break with Rome in 1533. At least the pages of history would not forget Thomas Seymour in a hurry. <laughs> as far as it was possible to be out of favour, my plan appeared to have backfired. I implored the Lady Mary to speak on my behalf to my nephew 
her brother the king yes the same mary who had turned down my marriage proposal so i suppose it should have come as no surprise she flatly refused but not content with simply being unhelpful she then meddled by advising elizabeth to leave our beloved stepmother's household by now my less than close sibling bond with edward was pretty much eroded then his acid tongued wife Anne decided to join the bandwagon, demanding Catherine return her royal jewels, the same jewels that Henry had decreed she should keep, saying, as wife of the Lord Protector and therefore de facto queen, she should have them. Those two were a perfect match. She shared his delusions of grandeur. It never failed to amaze me how inventive my brother could be in scoring points. The strong position I thought I held once was no more, so a quick change of tactics was required. I decided to be the fun uncle and make young Edward see that Uncle Edward was keeping him miserable and poor. I sneaked in pocket money, inspired I thought. He soon became accustomed to my generosity and opened, openly wished Uncle Edward dead. I did try my best to entreat him to sign over the king's body to me, but such was his fear of the de facto king, he was unwilling to do so. You could say things were not exactly going my way.